All right, sweet. Welcome to Tennis Sucks, Pickable Podcast with Travis, Rhett, and my Graham Demico. Yep. And uh, yeah, we are two days since MLP New York City. What a cool venue to have an MLP event. How is it for you guys being there? I mean, <laughs> um, epic. You know, like it was the center of Central Park, Woolman Rink. You know, it's generally a ice skating rink in the winter. It was uh, an amazing backdrop with the skyline. I thought the turnouts were really good. For the most part, they sold out. Um, people hanging on the rafters, kind of looking at what's going on. I wish we had some MLP signs there in the back, kind of shuffling more people in, because I thought they, they could have done even better with just people like standing around, because mm. they were selling matches for singular, uh, sorry, uh, tickets for singular matches. Oh, wow. And they would go in and clear out, go in and clear out. So if they had like all day passes, and then at times it didn't look as full as it, as it really was. So. Um, you know, that's the only negative outside of that. There was great crowds, great energy. Uh, and yeah, I hope we have more events there. It was, yeah. it was great. I heard rumor that it, they're no longer going to do ice skating there in the winter. That makes sense. That's I mean, they're probably fucking now. making a fortune with the pick pickleball. <laughs> I think it's 150 bucks an hour per court. And they have, what, 16 courts? That's a crazy amount of money for one court rental. Well, it's one expensive hour. in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. New York City is ridiculous. I mean, I bought a Coke for $9. <laughs> that's true I, yeah. I, I had a menu there were, yeah water and soda was like 10 bucks oh my god <laughs> that's insane yeah. you, what, what did you think Graham you like the venue you like yeah. the spot yeah I, I mean at first we had a little bit of issue with the court but they jumped on it they fixed they it fixed they're not it. They did a great perfect job. but they were very good they were very good I mean it was negligible the bounces in the beginning it was like oh my god this is gonna be a shit show they're like every third bounce was dead rolling and then and they did a great job fixing it was yeah. that the surface underneath on, the court? No, the courts that are there are not in the greatest of shape. They're a little bit slick. They're really slick, yeah. So they're, you know, the ball kind of, like, it's like being on a gym floor. They uh, slide, and then your feet slide, too. So it's a little bit of a, you know, hazard for the professional players. Yeah. So they put on some roll-on courts, and they worked out well. And they look good on stream, too. They look newer. The okay. colors were brighter. Yeah. yeah. But no, they no the, the venue was awesome. I haven't been to New York in a long time. I forgot how crowded it is, and how smelly it is and dirty it is, but it's man, it, it's, it, it's its own city. It's like yeah. no it's other its place world, on earth. Man. It's I own mean, world. Jesus, there's nothing like it. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. You can go from, you know, like million dollar steak restaurants to, to, uh, to yeah, like rats running, you know, past. Yeah. You. I saw some rats. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you see the dude that was riding his motorcycle through Central Park with a little cat with the tiny glasses? <laughs> no. Incredible. He had this, this black dude had a cat it was like, had chains on it and these little like John Lennon type glasses. <laughs> and he would just stand on the front while the dude was driving, bumping beats. It was like, all right, welcome to New York. Did you see the guy wearing the I Heart New York t-shirt at MLP? Yeah, I, I tried to not know him. <laughs> I pretended I didn't know him anymore because it was kind of embarrassing, but he's special in all the right ways. I may or may not have a Virginia is for lovers shirt on this oh, coming shit, week. That's good. <laughs> oh well, at least God. give it to everyone. Like do it right this time. <laughs> I know. I think you should have gotten 10 I Love New Yorks. I, they were, they were, they were 99. They were, no, they were th four for $10. No joke. Wow. 250 a piece. That's like the only cheap thing there. I was going to say, you can buy that many shirts, but you can't buy a Coke. Coke right. yeah. Four shirts or a Coke, your choice. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, well, yeah. you, this was the first event since we, the Smash had some trades. So um, how did you feel like the team performed in the new uh, format? Um, I think we were very, very close to having a great weekend. And I think we had a good weekend. We were three and two. We won three, three dream breakers, which we had never won a dream breaker before. So now we're three and oh since. Thank you, Donald. And um, I was trying to play with a new paddle. It, it, it felt like it took me like two days to really get used to it, uh, which is the series four from Proton. And once I got used to it, I felt really good. I was like, oh shit, I got it again. I'm, I'm playing well. Um, you know, Krista Gacheva came in. I thought she played very well. Uh, we were playing mixed together for the first three matches. We won our first two, lost our third, but the third was really, really bad. Like we were playing Blaine Havanier and Yuta Castillo from Vegas already up 2-0. Uh, they, the girls played great in women's doubles. Donald and I win doubles. And then we just threw out the absolute shit stinker of all time. Um, and we just weren't communicating well, like something was off, you know, it just, it just didn't feel right. Uh, Donald and Martina weren't playing well. They hadn't won yet. So we made that switch. And that was Donald's call. I thought it was a really good call because it seemed like the vibe improved dramatically mm -hmm. after that. Uh, but to me, 
the biggest, you know, difference for us is one, I think our team rapport is improved. Um, and I think having Donald play singles just gives you this outrageously unique sense of confidence mm -hmm. because one, he doesn't get nervous seemingly. I mean, of course he is, but he doesn't get nervous like normal people do. And he's like the want the ball guy, you know, the guy that wants to shoot the last three. He doesn't want to like pass it off. He's like, give me the fucking ball. <laughs> and in fact, when we were playing doubles, it's similar. Like it's close, like go for your shit, execute, execute. Like it's not like make the ball, you know, we need to high percent, just make the fuck. Like, it's not like that. It's just go for your shit, go for your shit. And so when he was playing dream breakers, it was almost like you felt it was a guarantee that every time was at least three, one. Wow. And then you have this, you know, enormous advantage. And, um, yeah, I felt like from day four, one day one to day four, he was probably 15% better in mixed and men's. So like, we're going to get that down. And I'm, I'm super impressed with him. Like, nice. I think he's a fucking badass. I think he's going to be an, uh, one of the best players in the game very soon. He's a student of it. He's watching it all the time. Uh, we're chit-chatting about things that we did wrong, things that we can improve, plays we can add. And I couldn't be more excited about his involvement in the Florida Smash. He's got a lot of fans, too. He had to take a lot of pictures and a lot of autographs. Oh, yeah. They're so like, dude, you just made the finals US Open, and now you're playing pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like what Graham will tell you, he, he doesn't have any ego it seems like he never mentioned his u.s open run he never talks about the things he did he's just humble yeah he's but, very nice too very just nice. like a like that southern you know southern Kindness. gentleman kind yeah. great yeah. manners um but i'll tell and you a you huge start. and he hits a bit he hits the biggest ball i've ever seen in pickleball it's the biggest ball in pickleball he hits he has the fastest hand you know right there with jack but the difference is donald kind of has it forehand and backhand because he's got a great twoie um and he's just fucking roping the ball. Yeah. Like, it's frightening almost. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, he's, he's going to be really, really, really good as time progresses. I agree. Is it a coincidence that it's both two tennis players that have those really strong forehand drives? No, it's not a coincidence. It's, um, it's a muscle that you develop. And some guys are naturally more loose than others and more whippy. Uh, Donald's kind of that unique blend where he is very soft in his hand, but it also looks very controlled and very fast. No! Um, Jack is a little bit more like lasso. Mm -hmm. He kind of slaps it more. Donald is a bit more con controlled, yeah. but but no, that is not a coincidence. That's that's years and years of thousands and thousands and millions of forehands, probably. <laughs> and then, obviously, you made, we made the trade from Tammy to uh, Krista Getcheva. Yeah, and that was, I, I think, a play to get a, a a stronger female in the Dreambreaker format. How did you feel like she did in those? I thought she did well in the Dream Breaker. And I also thought that, particularly in Mixed, she played her role very well. Um, the girls, they, they won only one match in the women's doubles, but it was a great win. They beat Yuta Castillo and um, the Wang girl. Zoe. Zoe, Zoe Wang, who's really, really good. So they played fantastic in that match. That was the, their best, best match by far. I think she cares a lot. Uh, I think she needs to relax a little bit more, if I was going to critique, because she... She wants to win really bad, and I, I think sometimes that can be too much, and then you, you can't play as freely as you want to. But um, I thought she was a great addition, handled herself really well. and Held her own in Dream Breakers. No, I don't did. think yeah. she ever lost a rotation. No. It broke even for the most part, but maybe even one, yeah. one or two. Yeah, I would say it's around there. She was probably like 50-50 for the Dream Breakers, 50 -50. But, but she was, uh, she was clutch when it mattered, and the Dream Breakers, too, came up with some great shots. So, you know, I, I'm really excited about our team because we were, again, we should get 3-0 against Vegas. Uh, and then every match that Donald and I lost basically was by two, you know, if they were all close, we were ahead in two of them, but I went back and watched and it was like, all right, man, we were, we were like, and it's always that way, but we were fractionally oh, fractions away from going four and one. And, um, and yeah, I think we're going to only improve. I think yeah. we're only going to get better in the That's next event. Awesome. Graham, how did you feel having a direct matchup against Tammy? I think it was Getcheva against Tammy in women's doubles and then a dream breaker. I just thought it was the perfect way to tell, okay, did we make the right decision? Like, do you have any better setup than going against the person you traded, also matched up in a dream breaker, in singles? And I think, again, they went 50-50. Yeah. But we won it, and we were 0-5 up to that point in dream breakers, and we won three this week and went three for three. So Donald's a big part of that, obviously, because he dominated in the one spot. But Krista didn't hurt the team, that's for sure. So the trade looks like it was the right move for now. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I, really, I really liked that Donald, like, he had never been in that environment before the MLP, so guys were tar starting to get real chippy and talk shit, and he fucking loved it. Really? Know? Yeah, because he started getting it going, too. Like, 
nice. little quirks or little equips back and and you know you could tell it hyped him up uh at one point he had like a great point but uh lane sleeth countered him he's like all right you know she went wave, wave the finger mm-hmm. at him kind of laughed like oh you get that one yeah. i'll get the next 10 but you can get that one yeah and and it was fun you know it was a it was a great environment i think he'll thrive in it and nice. you know again the guy who just made finals the u.s open and was screaming at the end of the matches he was so excited because That's you're not awesome. happy about that like fuck yeah what are you I- happy about and then how do you feel like that impacted on your game? Do you feel like playing with someone that's kind of hyped up feeds into your energy on the court? He's not really, he's actually not really, he's only hyped up at the end. Okay. Um, but he's super positive with me. He and I communicate really well. I think there's a mutual respect there that's rare. And I also feel like at the moment I'm helping him learn. You know, he's so much more talented than I am. Uh, has so many more options. He just doesn't quite know how to use them or when. Mm-hmm. And so at the moment, our communication is really good. And, and I think more than anything, I just like the confidence of knowing that the guy wants the ball. Yeah. You know, he wants the ball. He's not afraid of the moment at all and uh, has kind of that stud champion background. And that sh- certainly rubs off on everybody because now everyone thinks they're going to win. Yeah. He just, he just, it believes it. We're going to yeah. fucking win. We're going to win. That's awesome. And so, yeah, I think, again, only with time, it's going to get better and better and better and better. Yeah. Uh, Graham, you a- announced that the team has new investment, right? Yeah, we have a new ownership group that's headed up by Trevor Burgess. I think it was announced publicly and yep, we did on our social media. Local guy. We are uh, obviously obsessed with him and we're giving him sole responsibility for us winning three Dream Breakers. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had a great presence. He really did. Yeah. You, know, you could tell he was enjoying himself and taking it seriously. And we feel like we went from the Oakland A's to the Yankees. Yeah, that's- he brings a sponsorship, which helps because yeah. now okay. we can spend some money on some things, you know, that we needed. Uh, branding and marketing and, you know, maybe an upgrade for some of the players and whatever. And he's really smart. Like he, the way he's viewing things, I think is, is uh, really methodical. I like his approach. You got to like where his head's at in, in our conversations. It's like shit. Yeah. Guy, guy cares. And that's, that's all you can ask for. And he, he likes playing pickleball too. And, it, and likes the game itself. So he's doing this with an intention to enjoy being part of it, not just a financial investment. I don't know how many owners are just financially trying to invest in pickleball, but you know, do you think yeah, it's important I, that he likes the game too? I think he loves St. Pete is one. Okay. Yeah. He is also an investor in St. Pete Athletic, our pickleball club that's coming to St. Pete. So these tie in really well together. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of makes sense to invest in both. And he also enjoys pickleball. And so with all those things together, it, it, it made sense for him to invest. And our team's going to, Definitely improved because of it. No doubt. Sweet. It already has. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's up, you're pretty much like getting whiplash from um, New York to Virginia, which is coming up. You guys are leaving tomorrow. Yes. Um, can you even make any changes or you uh, in between now and then, or do you just kind of say, let's just keep doing what we were doing and see if we kind of get more chemistry as a team? Yeah, I think, I think that this is the best scenario for us personally, because the issue for me generally when I come back for too long is it's, it's hard to get uh, quality reps. And, you know, it always takes me like a day before I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what the game is like. Uh, and I don't have to worry about that now. Like, I, I feel like I'm in the groove. I'm in the mix. Donald's probably similar. I'm sure he doesn't have a ton of guys in Atlanta to play with. So the fact that we can build on what we were doing then feel more comfortable and I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that like we went two and three in men's doubles. That shouldn't happen. And as we improve, we're going to improve faster as a team than any other team in Challenger. I'm convinced of that, uh, particularly because of him. Um, so I think it's, it's a great scenario for us. I think the mixed change was perfect, very bright uh, personalities match. So I just think we got to build on what we have. Yeah. Which teams uh, in the Challenger division do you find probably the most threatening at this point? The teams, I, that, mostly the teams that picked up women. Yeah, the teams that pick up, pick like bought the women that you know are. The Miami premier. pickleball club with Bobby Oshiro. Right. She mm-hmm. created that team. And Milan Rain, like that's a scary but, women's team. Yep, and then um, Megan Fudge in the uh, Chicago Slice. That's a huge upgrade. These yep. are all borderline premier level females that are replacing fourth round challenger females. Right. Like right. talk about an upgrade. Right, you, right. It's like uh, if we traded Travis for Ben Johns. Like right. yeah, we're gonna do a little bit better. A little better. <laughs> sure yeah yeah yeah. that makes sense yeah it's actually uh, like trading who like our fourth round pick for i was first so you got to go all the way down yeah actually. yeah yeah it's even it's even more than that Probably yeah more, it's like yeah. it's like you're trading um but yeah, yeah tammy yeah. emrick for annalee 
Anna Lee, not quite, but I mean, something you know like that. I mean. Imagine yeah. what the team would sure, be if yeah, that happened. Yeah, so yeah. there's those, and I, I have a feeling you're going to see with Susanna Barr and the Black Bears too. Like they're in last right now, but as soon as Susanna starts playing for right. them, they're going to go from last to fifth overnight, sure. guaranteed. Mm. Sure. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, one player can have a huge sway. They basically got two first round picks. We would do better too if we had gotten two first rounds, a second and a third yeah. round pick. Yeah. Uh, do you guys, are you still using, I know that at one point you had worked with real clear stats to get kind of ideas of how things are going. Do, are you going to do that more often, you think? It's possible. We haven't so far this season. Um, we are kind of trying out uh, pickleball vision, PB vision. Mm -hmm. They call it PBV. Uh, we recorded some games last night to try to get some data. What was your fast surf? They were low. They were like 40 or so. Yeah, see, that's not I awesome. believe it. I think it's right Grand. with that ball. I don't think I can hit him much harder. I'm telling you. You are a hundred percent wrong. I pro again. I, I did would, it with I the would, radar, and I couldn't Graham, get it above I like promise. 45. Graham, I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> what is going on? Graham's trying to improve. I his mean, he's, he showed me the stats, and right away I was like, "These, these, this is inaccurate." Oh, because I see. I've done this. I did this. You remember when we did the thing in, in, in Proton? In Proton. Yep, yep. And and everyone says like Deckel serves around 70, and and we had guys like Donald. I think was the fastest at 66 miles an hour, yeah. 2300 RPM. That was the fastest. Right. And they have players that are hitting their serves hard at like 40 miles an hour. I'm like, no. And Graham hit a serve hard last night. He's got a fucking mod basically in his hand. He's not serving 40 miles an hour. No, so, I'd say so it was more like 55. Right. So yeah. that's not accurate. It would be interesting. Yeah. But it has a lot of good stats. So yes. we'll work on that. We're going to record, sure. we're going to record all the games um, in Virginia beach, put them all in the system. And then okay. we're going to look at that data and see cool. what we can change. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a great, it's a great program. It just needs, you know, like everything it needs tweaks. Yeah. I mean, it would be pretty powerful if you actually record your games and upload them quickly and get feedback oh. in the moment. You gotta have right? AI. AI is so critical. It is yeah. AI. That's what it is. That's right. what I mean. That's my oh. point. Yeah, so we're going to do it. it. It takes the whole process. They did it last night for like, a, we had a couple four-minute games, but like an eight-minute game, the whole process took me maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't do anything. I'm just pushing a button. Sure. But 30 minutes later, I've got a bunch of stats. Yeah, nice. That's good. Firefights one, return speed, right. serve speed, in and out. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. nice stats. Like What's some, in and out mean? Like uh, your, like um, how many balls you hit in and out. Oh, oh, oh How oh, long oh, the rallies oh, were. Okay. Like if I hit 75 balls. So how many touches balls, per miss. Correct. Right. So out of some of the things that kind of came out of the MLP event, uh, these, there was some new technology for calling out balls. Uh, so the cameras had a higher frame rate. So you I could think they worked great. By the, the way, cameras the cameras, the cameras did really were so? able to yeah. catch yeah. the line they, for sure. They were able to freeze it almost every time pretty well, right on the spot. But apparently they really wanted to fuck themselves <laughs> by <laughs> changing what they considered an out ball. So who can we blame you, for that? Is there one person that was like, hey, here's a good idea. Hey, Craig, um, what did, you, I could, don't think so. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with Jason Aspis and it's probably him mostly, but I also know oh, about- Oh, it's a PPA thing as well as MLP, yeah. it's both? It's yeah, a but UPA I also know that they're, they're trying to get to a point where this is not a guess. And they're, so they were using an equation. I already know that that's gonna be changed right away. They're not gonna do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, it was obvious that there were out balls that were called in. Oh, they're changing it already? Already, yeah. This is what Jason Aspis, whoever's in charge of this, start testing stuff in Challenger, see if it works, and then using it in Premiere. I know it makes the two products a little different, but come on, let, let's use. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, it's a um, great idea for everything. Like we could have easily figured this out and challenge me. Like, no, this is dumb. Don't do it. And don't do right. it. Take it sure, away. Sure. And then no one in Premiere would have heard about it. It wouldn't become a story. Yeah, yeah. And, and we well, wouldn't have had this problem. Graham, can you explain what the rule was at at the event? The rule, correct me if I'm wrong, is seventy five percent of the ball has to be not touching the line. So the cameras are shooting straight down the line. And if 25% of the ball is over the white line, then that's considered in. Right. Even though, like we've showed in a video, you and I, Luke, right? If you stand Top. across from right. it, you can see green spa or space sure. where it's out. It's well, obviously so out. So what they're stating that is, it's true, but it's impossible to quantify, is that how much is the ball compressing? Because we know now that it does compress. And how much does it skid? The ball obviously skids as well. Those are very, very hard things to say it did this much and the angle of the skid matters and where it comes from, all these things matter. Um, so the, the other issue with it was Donald had a call that I was sure was out and it was against the Chicago slice early and we got overruled and we didn't know why. 
And then they said basically that Donald's leg and foot blocked it. So to err on the side of caution to ensure they didn't get hooked, they just call it in. So they don't mm. go with the original call. They overrule us. And it's like, wait, both of us saw the blowout. So that was like, okay, that's some real bullshit. Yeah. Uh, and then it actually happened again on a return that I called out where like my leg and butt are blocking the camera right behind me. So they use the camera from the far side and that's out too. But, you know, they're, the way that they were trying to make this not a guessing game made it more of a guessing game. Because now as a player, you're like, I, I can't even have depth, per depth perception. If I see the ball bounce out, it's out. And, and now, you know, that wasn't the case. You know, fortunately for, for guys like Tyler Loom, who hooked by a foot and a half, it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, we're not worried about the balls that are a millimeter out. We're worried about the balls that are three inches out. Yeah. Or three inches in that are called out. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that there was one particular out call from Loom where the ball was a foot in. Yeah, it's And it was pretty oh, bad. MLP? Oh, yes. Oh, my, oh, my gosh. God, again? It? Oh, my God. It was incredible. In New York? Yeah. This is like the... I, On I, championship I, listen, court? I haven't even listened to their pod. Just someone just sent me like the throw. And I guess he had like a hook on his hand because... DJ Young called him out for hooking seven, eight times, which, look, if the ball's close, this guy's calling it out. Just who he is. Like, enough. It's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. You know, like, I, I don't want to have a battle with the guy. I don't need to fight with the guy. We, we, have, we have different thoughts about integrity and fair play and fuck right off. Yeah. Know? When you see me, walk the other way, motherfucker. <laughs> um, but aside from the line call, was there any new serve rule implementation that in this one? fucking hysterical. Did you see the thing with Colin Johns and Will Howells? <laughs> no, actually, I don't think I did. Tell me. I think they were both like trying to make a mockery of it almost, particularly okay. Colin. So the rule in MLP is you, you can go low to high from any height as long as your wrist isn't above the ball. And Colin hit a ball from like almost his shoulder trying to go up on it, hit the shit out of it, might I add, but his wrist was slightly above. So then Howells was basically, I don't know intentionally if Howells was doing it, but his was very high. And he made the joke like, I've worked on this for hours. I'm right at the line which might be true, but <laughs> those guys were serving fucking high and hard. And again, I get the concept. Actually, I don't. I lie. That the idea that like optically a, a drop serve is bad makes no sense to me. It's the only way, only option that you can actually have the ref be able to call it. There's no subjective nature. There's no I saw. There's no maybe. Mm. Fucking drop the ball and hit it. Yeah. End of story. Otherwise, it's all your problem. Hold the hand like this, drop the ball, lift it one ball length. Fuck me. Come on. Just drop it and hit it. Yeah. It's funny. I, de I definitely saw some videos of uh, Kwong practicing his drop yeah, serve. Saw, well, he had the bowling one. Did you see that one too, though? <laughs> yeah, I don't think like, I saw that one. He was a bowling motion because he got called for it. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And he literally wild. was like, like pretending to bowl. <laughs> That's wild. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we're still a little bit in the weeds in terms of these rules. And yes. So I don't know if there any changes will be made for this weekend. Do you know if any? I have no idea. Yet. Same, probably same rules as Maybe. this last week. Pablo rules. got called for uh, being off the ground when serving, and That's he right. was off the ground rather often. But <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a rule. Yeah, that is a rule. I was yeah. like, oh shit, you can't leave the ground. Well, he's doing it every time. Deckel also comes very close, but he goes manages tippy -toe, to tippy toe like it. I think. Tippy. But yeah, it's close. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's see. Uh, pickle bold Ryan gets engaged. Yeah, yeah that that's cool. pretty cool. A little engagement right. moment. Did you know about that? No, I just saw it out. Oh, it and I had been talking to him all week, which was mm. strange, but I guess why would he tell me? Yeah, he would never, of course. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna Hey, guess what hey. I'm gonna do this week? I don't know. I, I, that's, I, not, no, no, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he even, him and his fiance now did uh, the commentating on our court. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that's Carol, awesome. Um, Carolyn? Carolyn, her name? Not sure. Right I know. Congrats. But well, I he's like so his partner at the lab, Carlos. We send Nacho Libre quotes back and forth to each other. <laughs> Sometimes even audio. He'll just send me one that goes, Nacho. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny to me, but I love fucking Nacho Libre. <laughs> love him. Um, and the fives go undefeated. Um, I think just, Miami did too. Yeah, Miami did too. Oh yeah. Wow. Which shouldn't have happened. We should have got a piece. Of um. So yeah, Anna Lee just really obviously both mixed. I mean, she just. Uh, yeah, Anna Lee is the best player on the planet. Like, male, woman. And I don't mean like that she would beat men. Please don't take that too far. But as far as just, you know, being In the her. best player, she's yeah. the best player. And, and I, I, I gained a lot of respect for her this week. One, she competes unbelievably well. Like, she is a ferocious competitor, uh, which I admire. And then I saw an interview where they were talking to her and Zane. Zane's the captain, who Zane's a great captain. And they said something like, 
Annalie, you're the best in point differential. And Zane, you're in the bottom five, but yet your team is still winning. How does that be? And she just like interrupted him almost and was like, listen, Zane is the best captain. He brings so much to this team. And Zane, of course, was like, team game. I don't care what I have to do. As long as we win, I don't give a fuck. And, and I just thought the fact that she was 17 and was already like defending him and going to bat for him, I was like, all right. Yeah. You, you, you've won me over. Mm -hmm. Who would you rather have as a teammate? Anna Bright or Anna Lee? I mean, who would I, as a teammate, I mean, I'm to win, about, I to win. If you had yeah, to you pick, take Anna Lee. You, you take, take Anna Lee. Lee. Yeah. I mean, I have a personal relationship with Anna Bright. You know, I like her. I don't She's know. a friend. But She's in cool. team sports, Anna Bright, you can make an argument for her. She picked Rohrbacher and Faye. Yes. No, no. I, look, yeah, I'm not going to deny that. But, but Anna Lee, I, we actually had this conversation today because as a joke, I was saying, like, I'm working on this grip and I wanted Hayden's advice and Gabe's advice. And Anna wrote me saying, you don't want my advice? Like, my foreign drop's pretty good. I was like, good point. Like, I want your advice. And she wrote me legit and just said, Anna Lee has by far the best drop. And unfortunately, she's the best at 80% of the game. You know, like every yeah. asset that she has. And so it just shows you that she's aware. She's not trying to like front on that. The girl's ridiculous. She hits this roll drip on both sides. It literally looks like she has the ball on a fucking string. But who I are wish. you? What team are you going to take then? St. Louis Shock or the Fives? Well, you got Hayden and fucking Gabe. You're talking a whole different. But I think Anna Bright's a big part of that decision. Why yeah. they oh, have yeah, them. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Now, well, you said who drafted a team. I'll take Anna. That's okay. different. Okay. But to get her to draft, she's got to be on your team. So it's part of it. Okay. But either it's a tough way, decision. Like, I don't, I genuinely don't think it is. I, I genuinely don't think it is. But I see what you're saying. But uh, I'll also make the case that Will Howells is improving incredibly fast, playing better and better all the time. So that was a, a flyer of a pick at the time. And he looks great. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So Will Howells, yeah, you mentioned him. He's doing really well. He, is, did you realize he's his roommates with Hayden? Yeah. That's uh, funny. Hayden moved to know. Florida recently to kind of be in that group in practice. So you got to commend Hayden doing everything he can to improve. And it's showing. Um, and yeah, now they are. Where do you live before? California? There's Cali. They don't have players and, out there? Well, he won't like this, but he was from like the Victorville area. Sorry, Hayden, have to do it. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, a lot of players in LA, but he just felt it was a better environment for him there. And I, it's hard to disagree, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best players in the world, 15 of them seemingly within like a 20 mile radius. Fuck, get over there. I think I'm going to move down there. Yeah, you Where is you'd that? Improve. You'd get there quick. Where is that? Um, <laughs> West Palm Beach, West Palm Delray area. You get in those games. I can right. see that. You show up. <laughs> they're just like, Graham, oh, I would, a fourth. I would get in. Oh, yeah, 100% for one game. And they're like, all right, that's uh, enough. <laughs> you, that's, that's enough charity for today. Don't worry, Graham. You always have me, buddy. I would work my way in. <laughs> <laughs> or work your way out, I think is actually the appropriate terminology. <laughs> when are you guys going to start getting a little pot of pros over here? When the club is built. I think that's yeah. going to be the tipping point. Yeah, I think that's fair. You think you can get some people, convince some people to come up here when yeah, it's I open? Yeah, I heard Pablo moved over there too now, Boca. Yeah, he, did. he did. I was hoping for Pablo, but... I know, I like Pablo a lot. Maybe we get Rohrbacher soon. You know, and then the, the freight train opens, or whatever the fuck you call it. The door Possible. Open. Yeah, that would be great. I um, could certainly use it. So, um, one last thing I, 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 on the MLP stuff. Is there another trade um, period coming? Yes, after Virginia Beach. Okay, which, in October. does that seem a little odd considering there's only like one or two uh, events left? No, it's perfect timing. One more event to try to get in the playoffs and then for the playoff. Yeah, makes, makes sense to me. I think it's a great time to have a waiver period. matches, man. That's crazy. Okay, sorry. That was no thought. Yeah, yeah. we'll have, yeah, we'll have, yeah, you'll have Seven time to test. four in Miami. You'll have test, time to test them in Miami and then hopefully they get you into the playoffs and you take them to the playoffs. Oh, to the play. Like oh, I see. Last I see. Changes, you know, yeah, yeah, to get yeah, yourself yeah. in the playoffs Got it. and play, play the playoffs. How Do you think any teams will make changes? Yes, for sure. Uh, it's a given. You, yeah, I think so too. Do you There'll think, be trades even before waiver period. Do you think that it's dis uh, disadvantage to the the league from a fan standpoint to have trades happen so often in the season? Uh, yes, but. I don't, uh, think it you know what? Right now. I don't think it matters right now. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Not until there's like uh, home and away games here and that those four people or six people, whatever it ends up being, mm -hmm. are coming out to Crescent or going to spa and, yeah. and touching this community. Sure. Until that's the case, nobody gives a shit. He's right, because people are coming to see players. There's no question. You hear that? 
Never heard but that. they're <laughs> able to see the players regardless of what team they're on. So yeah, like if yeah. they want to come see Ben Johns, it doesn't matter what team he gets traded sure. to. He's going to be at the event. So therefore they're still coming. So no, see, yeah. on a fan perspective, it does not matter. Got it. It yep. just matters for us as a team building fans. Right. That's what it matters for. Right. Yeah. Right. Which we'll have the opportunity to do as time progresses. Yeah. You know, and hopefully out. we can stay on center at 10 a.m. and they don't move us to 1130 the night before. Yeah, that, that doesn't help. That was pretty dog shit. Got to say. Uh, so I've got a note here that says Sam Curry is giving all tennis players a bad name. That's beyond blind. <laughs> well, because like I've been telling people how good Donald is going to be and everyone thinks I'm like ridiculously dumb. And, uh, and, I, and I look at them like, do you, do you understand his pedigree? Do you grasp the concept that almost every skill he has in tennis translates perfectly? Why would he not be good? Like if he fucking practices, why would he not be good? And people are like, no, 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 he won't be that good. Shut the fuck yeah. up. This guy's ridiculously good. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, Sam came in with a skill set that doesn't translate as easy. And I think people got the narrative that if you were a really good tennis player, then, you know, of course, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a good pickleball player. But if you're crafty, use slice, use angles, fast hands, you're probably going to be good. If you dropped 150 mile an hour bombs and cracked a forehand, no, that doesn't translate. So yeah, a little bit, Sammy, love you, buddy. But it gave, gave a bit of the crossover players a bad name. Mm, got it. Yeah, that makes sense. I suppose, well, both Sam and Jeannie, probably two people yeah, that... Jeannie's that, that and I love how Jeannie's handled it because she's been more than aware and more than admitted how different the game is for her. And that's a perfect example. Takes the ball on the rise, strikes ground, strokes really clean. It's not coming to the net. Came to the net to shake hands. That's it. She never what? came in and hit a volley in her life. So... Yeah, it's not going to translate at all. But Donald, if you go back and watch his tennis matches, great doubles player, uh, super crafty, lots of angles, great hands. He's got every asset you want to go. This guy's going to be really good. Yeah. We saw some, uh, some new beef, I think, on the courts this, this weekend. I think I saw Jack saw go for a paddle tap with Alshon. He just walked away. Do you see that? And, I was and Alshon. Jack yeah, it was with somebody else. Alshon was it not Alshon? There. Uh-uh. Alshon wasn't yeah, there. The was Rangers weren't there. Um, was it Newman? It was Deckel and James, I think. And he gave Oh, the, it was James. You're yeah, right. Yeah. And then he just held his hand out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But James is so zoned in or zoned out, whatever you want to classify it as when he plays. Probably didn't see him. Oh, okay. He's got it. So you, you might. He did he be like, oh. You oh, think he's just like not even realizing. No. Or like, yeah, yeah. No. Got Jack, it. Jack's, you know, having a lot more fun, more aware of the surroundings. James is like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn it. So is there any beef on the courts that's more strong than Colin Johns in the net cord? <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point he's doing it for the comedic value. Like I swear bit. on center court when he was <laughs> doing that same routine with the, it was like more for the fans than it was for the actual emotion. It's yeah. a part of his mystique. Now. Yeah, it's, it's like, like John, a part. John McEnroe going fucking yes. nuts. Yes, it felt that way. He might be right. Like he was WWE in us. <laughs> yeah, he played. He played well actually. He seemed to care a lot more. I was happy for him. Yeah. Every match that I watched, he looked like he was playing well. Do you think that, I mean, we've seen, so we've seen a kind of inverse of what I, I, I predicted, which is the Johns bros came back last PPA and took gold, but then the opposite happened, which was in women's doubles. We saw an upset with Rachel Ooh, and Anna taking it. So what were you, what was your guy's reaction to the women's match that final? That's why I was saying, do you take Anna Bright yeah. <laughs> or do you take Anna Lee? Another well, argument for that. I mean, I think right now I would take Rachel over Catherine in women's doubles, period. And, I mean, Rachel's uniquely gifted, especially in an attacking nature. And it's, it looked like they decided that they were going to attack Catherine at will, who uses a Selkirk power air. It's not coming off yeah. the same way that Annalise paddle does, nor does she hit the ball as hard, regardless of paddle, as Annalise. And they attacked her, attacked her relentlessly, and, and that was a great strategy. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I still take Annalise, but... But they played great. It seemed like they adjusted their tactics. And I think that's going to be a very interesting rivalry for the next yeah. six to eight months. And then we'll see what happens. I was going to say, you think that the door is now open. Now they've proved they can do it once. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. It's not going to happen a ton. Hmm, I think it's going to happen more often than you think. I'll say this too, is like Anna Bright. I don't think it happens again this year. Bet. Okay. Hundo. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Any team or Rachel no, no, no. and Anna. No, Just the, I'll say any team. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love that you make my bet better. Any team's fine. Any team. Oh, what you mean? Like Anna like and Catherine Anna don't Bright, get upset. A, at sorry, all? Anna Lee and Catherine. When is the season end? November? No, the it ends in December. The last tournament's Daytona. Yeah. Oh, Daytona. The O snap. PPA. They might not even play it. You know, like 
Okay. okay. So there's probably what? They probably have four four events left. Yeah. I'm going Catherine and Nana the rest of the year. Rachel, okay. I got you, girl. I got you. No, <laughs> trust me. I love Rachel and apparently a little less now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad They're... you're being objective, Graham. I'm glad you're not letting your your affection exactly. for her sway your opinion. But exactly. But yeah. Um Graham's a numbers guy. He's he's a stats man. <laughs> as we saw yesterday. He didn't try to make serves, tried him as hard as he can. But he made them all. He did make them all. Got up to 41 miles an hour. Super accurate. <laughs> it's pretty exciting to see a, a, at least a little crack in the, the women's doubles oh, yeah. area. We talk about Atlanta a little bit because we didn't. Let's talk about Atlanta for a minute. Atlanta PPA was interesting, right? Uh, for me, it was great because I started to play well again. I, I'd never beaten Riley before. Absolutely shit on him. I love Riley, so I can say that. But... I think he, he, would, he would tell you that hands battles that day was on fire and me and Jade beat he and Elise badly. Um, but then there were some really interesting matchups like, uh, what's his name? Grayson Golden beat Ben Johns. Now Ben retired after game one. Mm-hmm. It was indoors. We know Ben doesn't like indoors, so you can speculate on that. He looked great and mixed in, men, in men's doubles. But the majority of the tournament until the final was played indoors. Tyson right. and Xiaomei in the semis beat um, who was it? JW and Dylan. And then, you know, that was the second time Donald and I ever, ever played together. We got to play on center against Jack and Colin Schick and had a blast. Um, By the way, John May, did you see that? He played Premier this yes. event in New York. That's right. He got uh, with Tyson. Yep. No, smart with, move. Uh, with with no? Newman. With Riley Newman. For the Columbus Sliders, they, Jao May, JW, JW oh, could Oh, that's play. right. You're right. They subbed in Jao May. And Xiaomei and Newman played. So I think the Sliders are going to make a play for him full time, is my I mean, guess. He's really good, man. And all disciplines. Like, he's very good in singles, very good in mixed, very good in doubles. The line between the men's premier and challenger is a lot thinner than... Thin. Very, very thin. ...than the women's. But, yes, on the women's side, it's a little bit more... Yeah. Uh, ...pronounced. Very which interesting. Which I think will change with time. It's just not there yet. So who's Riley going to partner up with at this point? Great question. I mean, he's sure. trying to figure it out. I think Alshon's his guy. I mean, they made final um, and, or semi, semi, sorry. They got semi and lost to Ben and Colin. Not very close, uh, but I think played well up to then. So I think he and Alshon will continue to play. Um, but he looked better. He's, you know, he's using a poppier paddle. Like everyone's trying to adapt and adjust to yeah. kind of what the game is becoming. And eventually everyone will and it'll be normal uh but for the moment you know it's still it's still an arms race yeah here's my hot take do you think that rafa would play much better if he didn't use the adidas paddle no <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't I think he has question. the um and, I, and this is not a knock on him it's really not i just think he's more like fun and flashy than he is tempered i and see he wants to go for speed ups from three feet back and and he's very good at those things, and he can play amazing. I just don't know if they're, like, sustainable day in, day out. Sure. Yeah. The risk-to-reward doesn't always fit, but, of course, sometimes he's going to pull it off. Yeah. Is there <laughs> he, a player you he think... Talk, he talked shit to our new ownership after game one. Really? <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> they won their match, and we were watching. He walks over to our table and goes, he goes you're going to get your chance Saturday, or you're going to get yours Saturday. So he's, the, he's, a unique, he's a unique I'm just fellow. Like, <laughs> he's a unique fellow. You got to just you gotta take him for what he is. The group Wild. just stared at he's him. All country. Yeah. He's all country. He's all country. It's hilarious. Do you think that there are any players that are super inhibited by their paddle? Like that yes. would be overnight different if they had a different yes, paddle? There's yes, there's many. But I, I mean, many. But I, I don't want to delve into that too much. But yes, it's an absolute... Like, again, Anna Bright, she used her Gen 2 for, I don't know, a month and a half or something when her, instead of the mod. Yep. And to me, it looked like she wasn't the same. Her results suffered a little bit. And she's still using a great paddle. Yeah. But she was instantly better when she used the 3S. Ball comes off faster. Yeah. More rotation. Yeah, there's fucking a ton of players. There's some players the I would love to see with some different yeah, paddles and me? how good they could be. Right. I mean, I don't know. I, like, the Franklin paddle is a good paddle, but Hayden, shit. Hand battles, he's already terrifying. Rohrbacher. Rohrbacher. I mean, on the women's side, that's the biggest one. Shit. Give her a Yola, she might be... Second best player in the world. Yeah. Wild. It's fun to think about. It's fun to think about a tournament where everyone had the hot paddles and a tournament where everyone was playing with soft control paddles. It's funny. A guy, a guy actually, Ryan Finley, you'll like this. That was his idea. Like, let's have a 
Like in tennis, they have different seasons. Okay. You know, grass, clay. He was like, let's have a fast, a slow. Yeah. Everybody uses these. I was like, I don't know if you can do yeah. that, but it's let's not a make bad the idea. Slams. It's actually a terrible idea. Make the slams all hot paddles. And then the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the heat. Well, I'm glad you guys are on the same page. I think it would be interesting. I mean, because I don't- How do you do that with manufacturers and companies? You like you can't. Not, not everyone well, use one singular let's, paddle. Let's, let's make an assumption that eventually the science can control right. deflection and uh, the coefficient of okay. restitution. And then companies can create ones that are- Within that boundary. Within the boundary. And then you can have events that raise the bar, you know? They had a vice only tournament there down go, in Miami yeah. for amateurs one time. They gave you a free, you paid like 200 bucks, you got a vice paddle, and then you play a tournament. That's crazy. I'd, <laughs> I'd play that, but only if we played with like foam balls. No, they were, <laughs> yeah. they were killing at each other. It was fun. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, we, what's, what's the PPA after this MLP event? Uh, Vegas. And there's another MLP there also, but we are not involved in it. Uh, is it Vegas inside or Vegas outside? Vegas outside is Darling Tennis Center, and I'm stoked. I'm getting there. On Wednesday, I'm going to play some games with Agassi again, Wednesday, Thursday. And with Meta, also known as Justin Gimmelstab, the fastest learning pickleball and pickleball player in history. And we'll have some, uh, some good games, a good time. You know, always good to yeah. go to Vegas. Graham, I haven't heard a conspiracy theory from you in a while. Do you have any cooking I just up? gave you one. Which one? Which one? That they're going to keep Jame. Oh. The sliders. That's, yeah. That's oh, a that's prediction. Conspiracy theory? No. A prediction. Yeah, we need something a little bit more out there than that. Uh, I haven't been thinking of any lately. None have come to me. How about <laughs> this hurricane coming? I don't have any conspiracy for it, but <laughs> about to get hit by a hurricane. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. A cat three, they right? Are. Yeah. It's supposed to be a nightmare. There's evacuation zones everywhere. You guys are evacuating on a private Damn jet straight. tomorrow. <laughs> hey, hey. See ya. Breeze Airways. I had to cancel my Breeze Airways flight. I was disappointed, but oh, I'll man. take it. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Well, yeah, that's all the, the topics that we had listed. So if you guys have any last minute throw-ins, go ahead. I think that's all I got. All go I smash. Got. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Tennis sucks. Although, oh, no, still no tennis players, but I do like watching Alcaraz. <laughs> I like watching Ben Shelton. Is that his name? Ben, ben Shelton. Yeah, the yeah. Gator. He's exuberant. Yeah. And he's raw. I like him too. He looks like he's having fun. I like people who look like they have fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Tennis sucks. Tennis sucks. <laughs>